Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It's an absolutely gloriously gloomy and rainy morning over here from Helsinki, Finland, but I would like to wish you the best of the best and the haves of the haves. We got plenty to talk about. Want to follow up from yesterday's short-term analysis as we did hit the downside target to 11,200-ish region. Bitcoin bouncing back up to the meeting of its current short-term time frame range, getting ready for the CME open later today at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, plus the weekly closure for spot price action at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And then, of course, fun time start uh, tomorrow at... Uh, 9 30 a.m for the traditional market open so with that we need to prepare and with the focus now going on to the crown chain application which can be found at app.crownchain.net what do we see we see something of very great interest right here open interest to use another bad pun is uh, currently above 2.2 billion so it has successfully broken above that range that we we're looking at between 1.95 billion to 2.15 billion correlated with the price action rate between about 10.1 and eleven thousand dollars to the upside so bitcoin obviously uh boosting up above the eleven thousand dollar region breaking that that a couple days ago is going to be further verified by both the open interest read that was also the historical volatility percentile read that we're looking at as well volume signature patterns and also trolling your bands with all things coming to a conclusion which was really giving us that bias that was that bitcoin was going to actually break the range not necessarily giving us a directional bias but a but a bias nonetheless that bitcoin was going to break the range on that following week or sorry that past week <laughs> that's what i mean to say and that's exactly what we got so uh, we need to now be looking at the other market underlying dynamic to kind of get up to kind of to kind of get up to speed with exactly what to be preparing for on this week so looking at the bitcoin dominance what do we see still holding the range i'm still looking for a major massive low to be put in that region i'm looking for a catastrophic <laughs> full retrace on most altcoins not necessarily today, not necessarily tomorrow. In fact, they're probably even bullish on the short-term timeframes, but I'm talking about over the next half year to a year. Um, looking at the fear and greed index, we popped up a couple points as well from 53 to a 55. And looking at the data tab over here, what do we see? What do we see? The futures uh, premium over spot price action is actually increasing, which is a good sign for the upside as the futures uh, market makers start to price those things in. Looking at the flow, that looking at the global, the global funding rate right here. What do we see? Still hanging at that 0.05% region. But I do want to go back and check in on the minutia for this. And again, it gets quickly revealed that actually this is mostly being held up by a couple of outliers here, FTX and Femex, which FTX definitely does have a decent amount of the market share. Femex, I think a little bit less so, but everything else, you know, all the other big uh, names in this. Oh, motherfucker. God damn it. What the hell just happened right there? Hey, cut that shit off internet or whatever whatever that is is about uh, but all the other ones were kind of like at not point out one percent which is basically par for the course which is basically saying that hey this is not really a major consideration right now we really want to see all these go up in concert with together uh together above you know one of the critical areas that would be either above not point one percent or below negative not point one percent right now being you know quite literally almost right there in the middle not going to give you all that much. Anyways, I do want to say this makes me so fucking excited, by the way. Uh, I spent a lot of time speaking with uh, with one of our team members yesterday, and we are going to be doing a humongously amazing revamp of this app page. And uh, it's going to be looking a ton different over the next maybe month and a half to two months, maybe around like a Christmas surprise or something like that. And uh, so obviously it's not going to be very relevant right now, but I just I'm, I'm still fucking excited about it nonetheless. And uh, there are some major, major, major 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 changes that are coming to this i got to tell you the guys that i'm working with they are they are they're just they're just fucking professionals at the end of the day that's what it is i mean these guys take serious pride in their work and uh, they're always thinking of new ideas and they're always thinking of just new ways to customize this thing out uh this is so fucking exciting for myself that uh that well i just can't i guess i can't really contain my uh, my excitement right now but uh, but yeah shout out to them if they are listening right now i want to go check out the bitcoin price action and bitcoin did what yesterday so yeah again following up on the short-term uh, price action we did say like likely a pullback back down to about 11,200-ish region. We got that already. Now Bitcoin trading sideways, flagging out at a high level. Now, but what does that mean? Well, this is the point where actually, well, actually on the short-term time frames, let's let's, uh, let's rechart this really quickly because there are there is a few things to do. So this breakout that we we're looking at from um, earlier this week above the $11,000 region right here, that does have a measure move outside of the ascending triangle, which does uh, accumulate all the way up to about, about 11,800-ish region, also synonymous with the 236 FIB right here at the, about 
11,750. So about a hundred dollar range between 11, seven and 11, eight, anywhere in there is good to me. And yes, I do think that we will end up actually hitting that uh, currently mediated by this current 3A2 fib right here at about 11,420 or, or let's just call it 11.5. I think it's a little bit easier or 11, sorry, 11.450 to 11.500 ish region. And uh, that is relevant for the short term timeframes. However, now that Bitcoin has actually broken out of this formation that we were baking in for the last month and a half, well, what we can do here is we got to just flip this around because it would be more appropriate to actually flip around the short term, or I guess it wouldn't necessarily be short term. This would be more so medium term at this point. Um, uh, what would what would you expect to be support to the downside? So as long as Bitcoin, that, that's basically to say that as long as Bitcoin's above this region right here, I am basically looking for this measure move to play out. And, and that would be all the way up to, again, somewhere around about 11,800-ish region. Doesn't mean that, you know, things just necessarily stop there, but I would be looking for a greater pullback after that. And uh, and then probably, you know, something else formulates, which gives us another bias on direction. However, you know, if you've been paying attention to the, to the longer term time frame, so the macro time frames as of recent times, or basically as of the last like three months, nothing's really changed there so so i can kind of just leave it on that anyways what i would say though on a daily schedule as long as bitcoin is closing above the daily uh the uh, sorry the top the top trend band on the daily right here we are in the process of trending so i'm basically not looking for any sort of a long-term pullback or greater pullback as long as we're doing that we are in the we're in the process of trending and only short-term pullbacks would be relevant similar to what we saw yesterday and that would again be a base of about 11,100 now on the more aggressive read right here you could be using 11,100 150 along the 0.5 uh, fib retracement right there. I think both. I think I think 11 one is just easier and a little bit more well defined, especially when you go look at CMEs as well. But looking at this right here, um, you know, keep in mind where CMEs did close on Friday, as there will n likely be a gap uh, between where we're going to open up later today and where we close in on Friday. As you can see, this is CME chart and it did close at 11,100. Now keep in mind that there is about a hundred dollars print premium on spot on spot price action from it, but that would mean that that if Bitcoin does close basically anywhere, or sorry, if basically if, if Bitcoin is trading anywhere above, let's call it, um, let's call it like 11,000, uh, let's just call it 11.1, although technically it would be a little bit lower than that, like 11,050 bucks, then we will naturally have a gap uh, going into the open today. Now, I fucking hate how gaps have become such a goddamn meme in this market. Uh, it seems to me that a lot of people who have either very little to no experience ever trading traditional markets have now become gap experts. And well, I mean, <laughs> you know, just because you feel a gap at night, doesn't necessarily mean that it trades the same way as it does in traditional markets. And in this case right here, uh, while Bitcoin likely will have a gap again, uh, any sort of any sort of a any, uh, sorry, any sort of an opening price above above our closing price on Friday will create that, of course. Um, you know, I would be looking for it to probably pop back down around that area and then get picked up once again. And guess where that area is? That would basically be akin to the 11,100-ish region that we just looked at right in over here. So if you are looking to play the gap, it naturally lines up with your breakout point and also your top side liquid zone, or sorry, the uh, the bottom side liquid zone for the medium term timeframes right here and also a major FIB. So all those things come into collusion with each other. And yes, I would be looking for Bitcoin to probably get picked up off there. Uh oh, what's this? Yes, that is, that is some dwarfies over there, baby. Oh, she's not listening right now. Yeah, you are right. Sorry, Elsa's trying to figure out some things on the other screen over there. And there you go. Some, some dwarfs for you. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, you know, if Bitcoin does open up above 11,100, like I said, there will be a gap. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'd look for uh, price action to come back down to fill the gap before trying a more upside. I actually don't have a strong opinion on that right now. The strong opinion was yesterday on a short term pullback to 11.2. We already got that. Uh, it comes back into kind of normality right now. And I I would not say anything further on top of that until basically I wake up on Monday and see, you know, and see where price action is at. Now, just like to the downside, we have a nice little, uh, nice little uh, support ceiling, right, support ceiling, support flow right here. Uh, we do have a short term region to the upside that still is governing our upside trajectory, which is basically right here, right at the 382 fib, which is exactly where our first target was to the upside on the break of this region right here at 11,500 ish region. So if that area does get broken, even on a four hour, now on a four hour, would be a little bit more conservative with it. I'd want to see a four hour closure above 11.5. Uh, but however, if we're using a 12 hour or daily, I'd use uh, 11,450, that basically the same number anyways. Uh, then yes, I would be looking for this area to get hit before any sort of a greater pullback, like I said earlier. So that would be another 300 to $400 move all the way up to about uh, 11.8, maybe even more than that over time. And uh, and that's what I'd be looking for. So again, it's kind of just going level by level here. And uh, seeing as we don't necessarily have CMEs open for trading just yet, Yet, I would really kind of uh, fall back from making any more any more adamant claims here or adamant claims it sounds fucking terrible um, but adamant
adamant, you know, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Setups. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good word. Uh, from this region. So again, I think that uh, yesterday was a day, you know, to call something like that. Today, not so much. Today is kind of the day to just sit back and watch and let things kind of formulate themselves. I really want to see where CME is open. And then I am interested in trading down here. I'm interested in trading over here. I'm interested in trading also a break above this region right here. Probably time to get rid of my uh, my long calls as well, because I fucking hate buying or holding holding long premium. Absolutely fucking hate it. And, uh, and so for right now, things are, uh, I guess, a little bit uh, sleepy in the early morning hours so looking at the looking uh, while we are here on the lower term time frames might as well go over the momentum also just to see if there's anything of note to give a slight bias four hour stokes are going to be coming down quite aggressively below the critical zone from the bullish side four hour rsi is doing what is actually putting in a little bit of a head and shoulders right there too and i do actually put quite a bit of weight on this so if i did have to call it right now next move will likely come back to the downside probably back down to about 11 150 or 11 2 region again um but I don't believe that it's going to break there to be uh, to be quite frank with you but I should talk about what hap what would happen if it did because at the end of the day my opinion on whether it'll break or not is irrelevant my only opinion or the only thing that I really trade off of is just this area right here so if it were to break to the downside which does make it a nice little natural risk management point I would be looking for another move all the way back down likely towards about uh, wherever this trend line comes in right here so that would be somewhere I guess around 10 750 to 10 800 ish region depending upon where you kind of approach it over time obviously rising over time as well but at this current trajectory somewhere around like 10 10 750 again if and only if uh let's call it 11,100 breaks to the downside preferably on a four-hour closure or above that would do it for me now let's go over to the three hour and see if it's kind of following through as well and what do we see here we do see basically the same thing actually we do see three hour stokes coming all the way down below the critical zone leading the force to the four hour stokes which is what you'd uh, expect and three hour rsi looking looking basically like a more ag aggressive version of what we saw in the four hour so again i i am starting to put a little bit of a short-term uh bias boner on the on the short-term downside here same thing with the buy hourly as well buy hourly stokes nice and angled to the downside buy hourly rsi same thing as well actually just about to get kicked out of the bullish control zone very clear head and shoulders here as well and what do we see on the hourly are we going to see the exact same fucking thing yes indeed we do so if i did have a call for right now i do think that bitcoin is going to be coming back down testing somewhere around 11.2 to 11.150 11 ish region and i'd probably be looking for another bounce around there if that area does fail again if that area actually does fail then i would be looking for an, a greater extension all the way down to about 10 750 ish region and very likely a bounce there and then i want to see things in real time once again but for right now very short term if i did call this downside and uh and then i want to but 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 uh, but realistically i would not be trading right now until cme is open back up and we get the actual you know the actual you know the you know the actual direction of this asset so with that in mind um what else can we do while we're here i suppose that this video is actually might even be a little bit more on the short side today just because there's actually not that many interesting things that we already haven't spoken about um, except for the very 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 short term looking at the 12 hour right here what do we see we do see 12 hour stokes still up and at them but they are going to be getting a little bit tired a little bit soon uh, we do obviously have a natural trend line going in all the way back from where back from our highs on the late july take on the 30 on the 23rd of july so right here uh sorry right Hey, where exactly is this? Um, be somewhere. Hold on. Let's let, let, let's exactly see this. Okay, this would be first of August. So this would actually be this high right here. Yes, indeed. And then the one before that would be the highs before that. Okay, got it. And then connected with this guy right here. Yes. Okay, so that does make sense. And then once again, this guy right here as well. Okay, very very interesting. Um, nonetheless, though this all happening with the content within the context of a uh, you know of an uptrend would suggest that uh the pullback probably does get bought but at the same time this probably does mark off another you know maybe maybe like a medium term high perhaps anyways uh going over to the daily what do we or actually no looking at the 12 hour rsi though what do we see 12 hour rsi is obviously bullish here short term is it is it go, is it good for a pullback probably yes um but uh but that plus 12 hour jewel plus 12 hour uh stokes technically still the upside i mean what if it does break this trend line and actually stays for a little bit of time within the critical zone could definitely happen let's actually go reference the reverse stoke indicator cross this would be a good time to be doing that and what is it showing it's showing that uh momentum remains the upside on the 12 hour as long as we are closing 12 hour deltas above tw about about 11 11,300 ish region pretty much where we are right now and this is only relevant for the next closure coming in seven hours and 16 minutes by the way just so you know so it will change after that one obviously um but that would suggest that if we do close below that region yes that's going to be another good indication that bitcoin does play that does uh, does 
does at least play that pullback back down to about 11,150 or 11,200, whatever it ends up being, and then probably does try another bounce there as well. But like I said, I'd really want to see it in real time, and I'm curious what CMEs here uh, say here as well. Yeah, CMEs look completely different. In fact, CME 12 hour stokes are just getting into the bullish control zone, and they got plenty of room to go. And this looks actually incredibly healthy right here, too. So that is why I'm very, uh, very hesitant to be calling a greater pullback. I'd only be looking at, um, you know, a short term as long as that $11,100 pivot holds. As long as that holds, basically, uh, I'm, I don't really see any real reason to be, to be, you know, skeptical or, or also be super aggressive on this as well. I think, I, I think a little bit of waiting here is good for the soul. Um, but that's just my opinion, man. Uh, of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm the furthest thing from it. And I'm also definitely not a fucking political advisor. Holy shit. Uh, I've got some very interesting messages uh, around the webs today, you know, in the discord, in the comment section and all that good stuff. And yes, I do read it, man. And uh, I read it because there's usually like a lot of like a lot of like very high consciousness and, uh, and interesting stuff being said. Um, but, <laughs> but people are like asking for my endorsement on president. Um, I, I think that this is like, <laughs> this this is like what's wrong with our society uh, to be quite honest with you because uh who gives a fuck who i endorse first off i'm not gonna be fucking voting because i don't like live in america like and i don't really plan on going back there so why should i have a say in what happens over there then again like why should they be able to tax me when i live over here you know it doesn't really make sense so maybe you know a little bit of give and go how about that uh but uh but you know at the end of the day man like uh, my endorsement is is to you if you're watching this right now here's my fucking endorsement yours you're fucking capable. You're smart enough. Make your own decision. How about that? I trust that you'll do the uh, that you, that you'll do enough research and you'll be able to make the right decision for yourself. And perhaps that might be different for the, from the person next to you. And you know what? That's how an operating uh, system should probably work, right? People are allowed to have differing opinions, and then we vote on it, and then we just decide what's best for everyone. But if you're asking if you're asking, if you're asking for my honest opinion, I think that America should just split up because it's too big. It's too big. 350 million people. You can't you can't get 350 million people to agree on anything like what the fuck and also just endorsements in general are ridiculous like how fucking stupid is that uh I, I saw that greta thunberg endorsed joe biden it's like oh great just what i was waiting for i was on the edge on the fence finally greta who <laughs> who's a goddamn political expert has shown me the way she's gonna think for me this time thank you greta wait a second greta what are your qualifications I am 17 years old from Sweden and I know environmental. I also do not go to a school. Great! I'm voting for Joe! Say no more! <laughs> it's like Jesus fucking Christ, man. That's honestly, I'm going on a little bit of a rant right now, sorry, but that's honestly why Trump won in the, f won in the first place because people are tired of that bullshit. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Hey, she's a kid. She's a kid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. But listen, I thought I was really fucking smart when I was like 16, 17. I was really fucking dumb looking back on it. <laughs> and and the, as the years go on, it's a progressive desensitization, realizing that I know uh, a lot less than what I think I did. And that's, uh, <laughs> and that's a fucking onion for you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, whatever. It doesn't make sense anyways. I mean, seriously, though, like what? Uh, like that's I, I honestly do think that that's why uh, someone like Trump wins, because people are just pissed off of being treated like fucking morons. You know, it's like, oh, oh, a celebrity endorsed a political candidate. Well, forget everything that I was thinking before that. I would just vote for them. It's like, no, 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 no. What? We're all equal for the love of fucking God. Um, anyways, uh, OK, so after we get on to that. <laughs> What else should we follow up on? Uh, of course, uh, Daily Jewel buy signal did play out uh, from 7th of October. I was a little bit skeptical on it. Didn't play it myself. Did say that uh, if the if all of them do start to get a positive slope, then it likely will play out. Credit to the people who did play out on the Discord. Um, happy for you. I mean, that was that uh, uh, that was a nice little play coming out of this uh, 7th of October base right here, given that last little bias of an actual resolution of the upside. Um, on top of that, we do see historical volatility percentile on the daily still coming in from an extremely contracted level. We went through about two weeks straight yeah sorry uh, no not two weeks straight about a week and a half straight of single digit reads and now looking like it does want to expand but i believe that this is actually operating a little bit better on the four hour yeah this is this is kind of what we were looking at this past week right we were looking at this as a nice little regression coming through this area right here i guess i already have it in there and that was driving the bias that we were going to see this range break um you know likely that week and uh and it did that was alongside obviously volume signature as well and and of course uh, four
formations and of course Trollinger band signals and uh, I believe one other thing as well yes open interest that is it um, but right now when we do see this expanding I would look for this to now give sort of the next uh, the next like medium medium term maybe even long term high as right now it is currently in the process of it still expanding obviously but once it starts to get especially around like a 90 or above and it starts to turn red over here that's when i do start to look for at the very least a medium term high especially with a time frame like this and it will likely go into a contraction phase from there over a little bit of time and you know that likely comes with some sideways to down price action especially considering that the expansion phase is obviously coming with an upside resolution of our current range so with that in mind uh unfortunately no turtle soup this time and uh what else do we have to look at let's go look at a two-day is there anything of note here two-day closed incredibly well as well so you know while i do think that there is some short-term downside make no mistake about it as long as bitcoin is above eleven thousand one hundred, especially on you know especially on a four-hour closure probably should use a 12-hour just because it is kind of a big level um i'm generally looking for some more upside eleven thousand eight hundred ish region likely does get hit um, and two day stokes, obviously very healthy, uh, looking light, looking nice and north. And what do we see on top of that? We see two day RSI reaching for the bullish control zone again, you know, long term, sorry, long term, it's constructive. Absolutely short term, you know, can that can this, uh, can this bounce off that region? Yes, that actually is quite, uh, quite likely in fact, but still, you know, I'd be looking for that area to get picked up anywhere around 11 to 11, one region, essentially looking at the three day. What do we see? Three days going to be closing tonight, I believe. Yeah, it is going to be closing tonight. Any, any sort of a three-day closure above 11,100 will imply continuation to the upside. Uh, again, targets of about 11.8 region. Three-day Stokes, nice and up and at them, nice and, nice and erect, getting out of the bearish control zone as well. So all of that is good. And three-day RSI also boosting above the uh, the exponential on this and also playing out some hidden bullish divergence. Uh, thank you to Caretakers RSI right here. One, two, and three stabs. And up you go, you little fuck face. And there it is. So I do believe that, you know, more long-term Bitcoin still bullishly buy here uh short term uh, probably a little bit of a probably a little bit of a pullback uh, maybe even spend some time down around the you know the low eleven thousand dollar region but as long as that area is still not broken on a time frame that actually uh, matters i would basically be looking for that area to get picked back on up and try again higher um and now i feel like i have some sort of a fucking weird cadence with the way that i talk sorry i really dislike that sort of like news uh infused talk apologies i sh I, I, I shouldn't have done that um Anyways, uh, going back on over here to our secondary charts, I do want to I do want to highlight a couple of other things that do make me still err to the side of uh, of seeing this continue upwards and onwards here. So first and foremost, as we already kind of spoke about, as long as we're closing daily dollars above the top side of Toronto band, which is currently where? Guess where? Guess fucking where? It's actually eleven thousand two hundred right now. Um, so it is it is a little bit a uh, little is is a little bit higher than the eleven one pivot. But as long as we're above there, we're in the process of trending, meaning that I'm basically looking for Bitcoin to on a daily schedule continue upwards and onwards and this is also in line with what we see on the macd which has successfully uh, crossed above the zero read right here so all of this all this struggle right here was leading up into that and there will be no actual uh, counter trend at the actual zero read it was all done right here Hi uh, histogram for the macd also further confirms this completely getting above the last little hump right there so the so uh, so momentum is increasing obviously so that is good of course alongside a break on the range living above the top side trolling demand all these things work together obviously and kind of applying you know both volatility metrics plus which trollinger bands kind of are and uh and momentum and momentum metrics which can also be further helped out by the dmi adx right here which this is what you're looking for as a dmi plus does get dominant above the threshold and the adx is strengthening it is, it is a nice little solid color, color right there i would be looking for this to likely give another try higher and uh bitcoin obviously living above the 200 simple or sorry not the 200 but the 20 simple and the, and the 10 and the 10 simple right here you know generally good and i'd basically be looking for the 10 symbol to be a little bit more of a hard base to the downside and guess where that is 11,000 so anywhere between 11,000 and 11,100 just region is where I'm looking for as long as this trend is still in progress with a with a with, with the with the next target to the upside if Bitcoin does take out the 11,450 resistance um, to 11.8 region we'll call it and then probably beyond after that as well I, I do think that it would be a little bit uh, strange to think that things would just stop there but I want to see it in real time obviously the weekly is going to take over here too and the weekly is incredibly important right now any sort of a weekly closure above this prior high on the 14th of September, which was guess where just just guess where you already fucking know where it is 11 one um is going to be pretty damn good as well for for the long term you know we've been talking about this a lot you know i i i i i know that like a lot of people really don't like the simple stuff but here's it here's the god's honest truth man some of the best traders that i know use relatively simple 
strategies like like strategies that you could probably put into words in just like maybe maybe as much of a paragraph and um and uh, and they're just consistent with it over time i i swear it's 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 kind of strange because you think that you should be doing like all these like crazy calculations and whatnot in order to be a successful trader but uh but realistically for 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 uh, for the majority of successful traders that i know they're not doing anything like that and the guys who are they're usually doing high frequency stuff because uh that's where you can really make the most bang for buck when you do get into the more uh it, it more into the more into the weeds on like the uh on the on the mathematical side anyways looking at this right here what do we see i mean it's it's it's, it's right in front of your very face the the weekly yellow 21 exponential mean average as long as bitcoin's above it and as long as it has a positive slope there's your long-term uptrend it's got it's been going good ever since uh, may 2012 getting you long all the way from about five dollars all the way up to thousand bucks after that uh can't even do the mental math on that one i think that's like a 200x game or gain or something uh but uh but don't but don't quote me on that one and uh to the downside it works the same as well a little bit less precise but still does calls this bull trap right here all the way down in 2014 then keeps you long all the way from october 2015 at about 250 bucks to almost twenty thousand dollars in just in uh, january 2018 and then it tells you about the bear market switching up uh as soon as the slope got negative and bitcoin price actually got wrangled below it all the way throughout 2018 to 2019 and then same thing right here then same thing to the downside right here and then same thing to the upside right here so what i can say in a more um colloquial sense uh on the long-term time frames uh, like a weekly i am basically bullish on a weekly schedule due to this uh as long as bitcoin price action is one above the 21 exponential mean average and two it, it has a positive slope of which both of those things are pretty much uh, there right now looking at momentum oscillators here as well we do see weekly stokes coming down this whole way so this is also uh, a little bit or not not a little bit this is actually incredibly interesting right here we're seeing momentum oscillators back off throughout this whole consolidation right here this is what you'd expect to see during basically a bullish reset that's i believe what's happening um you know, Bitcoin pops off this level and uh, comes back down, retests ten thousand bucks. But throughout that, all, through, throughout all of that, Bitcoin travels back up, actually even above the median, the range, and very little was even, or sorry, uh, a lot of damage was done to the momentum oscillators, but very little damage was done to the price action. Now, obviously, we do have a supporting trend line coming in somewhere right around here, coming in from these last few lows, and I'd, I'd, I'd you know, I'd argue that this is basically considered a test, especially as it does kind of come outside right around the edge of the bullish control zone, which typically in a C counter trend pressure in as well so with that in mind you know this to me it does look like it is a bullish reset on weekly stokes and what we'd expect to see is that uh you know if this is going to continue upwards and always we want to see the weekly stokes cross back onto the upside for a greater extension of this run past 11,800 ish region into the nether into the netherlands of this all uh <laughs> shout out to penny over there because he's he's my favorite dutch he's my favorite goddamn dutch but let's go see what the reverse stoke indicator cross has to say about this and guess what guess where it actually turns back up again on on this weekly closure coming in at 8 p.m eastern time tonight 10,850 so there you go as long base that that is to say especially as long as bitcoin's above 11,000 before the weekly closure uh we will see that naturally turn back up that means that it'll, it'll reject getting out of the bullish control zone and uh and, and weekly momentum will once again be the upside and that's coming alongside the weekly rsi getting back above the exponential and likely even into the bullish control zone here now long term again this is incredibly constructive short term medium term slightly neutral to slight bullish upside twist um but uh but you know if 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 if, if that criteria is met with bitcoin basically closing this weekly uh successfully above 11,000 especially even 11 1 which is kind of where i have that short term uh, support at uh then then we're naturally going to see all these things fall through and that's going to look pretty damn good so there you go um and again you know i i i i know that people just dislike simple things like that but remember um this is the same area, this 11,500-ish region. This is the same area that Bitcoin's been having so much issues around uh, ever since January of 2018. We saw the signatures of institutional order flow dynamics go around this region right here, right here, right here, and right here, all forcing extreme price action from there. And then for the first time since 2018, since early 2018, really 2017, end of 2017, I should say, Bitcoin actually closed above this blue box territory, above, above the liquid zone. And well, to me, that is a change of behavior, and I still actually stick with that. And because we are looking at a you know a greater timescale here, a weekly uh, and even a monthly as well, which can which we reference right now. 
um you know it's obviously going to take its time and the ranges are bigger but that to me does you know supersede everything else and as you can see right here the monthly has even closed above our last little kind of pivot high on june 2019 uh, sorry june 20 2019 as well so all these things you know work together and of course uh, as i do as i have been bringing up on the last few videos as well my mentor used to use the nine exponential moon average on the monthly and on the weekly on long-term it's kind of like judge long-term uh, trend and it's basically the same thing as what we looked at on the weekly 21 uh, but just something that you know uh, that uh, uh, that he kind of passed on to me and, and I'd be happy to pass on here and as you can see you know more aggressively speaking this is you know getting it right right now getting the last few lows on this whole run it even just works I mean just in general going all the way back to the genesis here so to me I am you know long-term macro as I've been saying bullish as long as these conditions are met um, short term you know I did get uh, to get uh, de uh, definitely my opinion did get bearish down around here but uh, but that is why I have those rules regarding uh, when to actually flip around and so as you've been saying for a long time uh, you know this area is a potential reversal area for the macro as long as Bitcoin just doesn't close a daily delta below 10,100 and that condition has so far been met um, so fair enough uh, let's put this back on right here okay let's go through all this once again already and let me just go check in the time are we in the TA nerd session yet oh we're actually deep inside of it right now um, Okay, what else can I bore you with? Um, I think I've actually said most of the things that I do want to say. Uh, is there anything here? Is there anything of interest on the weekly MACD? Does look like it might, might, it might want to cross back onto the upside. I, I don't. I can't make much out of that. In fact, the Mac, the weekly MACD would be the one thing that does make me a little bit skeptical of this current price action. Uh, weekly DMI plus is. Okay, this would look like the ADX is supporting it. That's not a thing, by the way. Just, 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 just so you know. Um, it, although it does look like that right now, but that's 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 uh, that's definitely not a thing. Um, I don't I don't have much I I don't have much to make out of that. That's Jesus toast right there. Um, so other than that, you know, to kind of wrap up my thoughts on Bitcoin, uh, very 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 short term. Yeah, probably does test on to the downside, but um, you know, assuming that uh, you know, assuming that uh, this weekly closure comes anywhere above eleven thousand or even especially eleven one i'm basically looking for bitcoin to crawl its way back onto the upside mediated by these two short-term pivots to the upside that would be 11450 and to the downside that would be 11 and 50 bucks we'll call it um so as long as you know, you know as long as we're kind of just also between them just just more consolidation but and just kind of setting up for the weekly closure and uh, and anywhere above this one again is a healthy weekly closure as far as i'm concerned yes we can test a little bit further down but not problematic let's go check out some of the altcoins uh, actually in fact let's instead of checking out all the altcoins let's go check out the bitcoin dominance um where is it there it is there she is ah there she is oh it's glorious oh it's glorious oh it's fucking glorious my friend it's mother fucking glorious and let me tell you why it's glorious because when we are coming off this level the same level that we plotted out for fucking three or four months in advance going all the way back to i believe january february of this year saying that this was likely to be the big bad reversal point i would still be he heading within that one and you know what's going to be happening you know what's going to be fucking happening you know what's going to be fucking happening to your altcoins oh god your fucking altcoins are going <clears throat> what about my Cardano's crown? Wrecked. What about my Lynx crown? Maybe not wrecked, actually. Okay, so fair enough. If something's going to be doing uh, something else, it's going to be Link. Uh, we did say yesterday, short term, coming back down to the 10 simple on the daily, and that was 88,000 Satoshis. I believe that we are still going to see that, but I want to see the reaction after that, as it is technically putting in a lower high right now. Let's see if uh, Caretaker's RSI has confirmed that. Yeah, okay, this is very interesting. Uh, and this this is exactly the way that I do it as well. Yes, it is not confirmed right now, but it is in progress. And if it does confirm on today's daily total closure, I would be looking for another test back down somewhere around 78,000 Satoshis. Um, I am not bullish on this thing as long as it's below 100,000 Satoshis. Now, and, and again, I should go back to the Bitcoin dominance chart here. Um, I'm not... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not looking for this one to fucking moonshot like today. <laughs> when, I, when I'm talking about a full retrace on a lot of altcoins, obviously not every altcoin is going to fully retrace, but we're probably going to see a shit ton of things washed out, especially with, you know, the whole DeFi <laughs> stuff going on, which some of it's probably going to be legit. Some of it's probably going to be fucking food names. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs>
I, 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 I strongly believe that there's like a cartel of fucking people just making altcoins and like coming up with the next big buzzword thing. And now it's just DeFi. And before it was, I don't know, what uh, what was it in 2018? I guess just altcoin was the name. Or, put a blockchain on it. We need facts on the blockchain. We definitely need acorns on a blockchain as well. And put your goddamn squirrels there on too. Because if we don't have them on a blockchain, then it doesn't even matter. It's like, what the fuck did I just hear? Is no one actually reading these white papers? These are these are silly. These are silly. Um, but uh, of course, not all of them are going to be doing that. That'd be naive to think. But uh, but on the whole, over the next six months to a year, uh, this is a humongous pivot in my opinion. Uh, monthly, I think sh I think tells it all. Uh, month monthly has a nice doji doodle in there. If we take out last month's high, I'd be looking for this one to initiate moves over the next, like I said, half year to a year, uh, back up into the mid to upper 60s, and that's going to be absolutely abysmal for most altcoins. Uh, as the boo cake party gets started um but of course like i said you know that does and that sorry that also does not mean that these altcoins get fucking shitted on versus uh versus us dollar that actually doesn't uh, uh make or or, or that there, there's there's no implication there at all she's talking about this satoshi value so you know looking at some of them i think you know i think it's obvious which ones are going to be the ones that are uh that are more successful than the other ones it's ones that actually have healthy charts going into now um this is a healthy chart If you do this, <laughs> it's an uptrend. Only if you can turn your computer screen upside down. Come get it, motherfucker. Jesus Christ, man. Um, <laughs> who would have thought a cryptocurrency named Unicorn is like actually bullshit? That's crazy. But what about my sushi tokens? That one surely can't be. <laughs> god damn man um but you know e you know even the really really strong ones like link uh well shit <laughs> like link uh do uh does look like i want some short-term downside here as well so like i said i'm not bullish on link versus satoshis as long as below hundred thousand satoshis um but let's look at link versus us dollar uh does this change anything um Actually, it has the same things potentially in place as well. Very, very interesting here, uh, but not looking as dastardly bad on the uh, you know on, on you know on the immediate uh, schedule for this one. So, you know if you know if we do see a close below the t uh, below basically ten bucks, then yes, I would be looking for a greater retracement back down to about eight and a quarter once again. Uh, but this one can pull through. I'm not, I'm not so I'm not so confident on the U.S. dollar valuation, so I should say that I I would not make a call here like at all. Um, what about uh, where's my buterols? Where's my buterols, sir? Uh, Buterol looking similar to Bitcoin, breaking above what would have been its topside resistance on this proverbial uh, descending triangle. So that is no longer valid. That is no longer available. And that gets thrown out. Throw them out, you shitcoin police. And uh, and this becomes the next the next sort of uh, medium term base here at about 360. So a nice range here, kind of akin to Bitcoin at about 11,000 bucks would be 360 for Mr. Buterol. To the upside, it would obviously just be this last little prior high right here, which I probably, uh, I guess already, I don't have it in uh, already. So fair enough. It's right there at about 390. And, uh, and that's that's basically the range that I'd be looking for to uh, to play off of. Daily Stokes still looking relatively fine, relatively healthy, although it has found resistance around this bullish control zone uh, since uh, first September highs and 21st September highs. Let's see what that actually lines up with right now. Uh, first September highs was this uh, was this area right here, and then the next one was this area right here. So it actually has gotten all of this ceiling thus far. I'm curious though, uh, referencing once again the reverse Stoke indicator cross, which by the way you can actually find in the description uh, below. Um, uh, what do we see? We do you see that momentum will remain to the upside basically as long well above, above 360 so, so 360 is the bias breaker there um so to speak <clears throat> all right what else do we want to look at um i think that's pretty much it i i don't really think that there's too much more um you know i, I feel like i'd just be boring people because there's not there's not really much new stuff on the higher term time frames uh maybe we could quickly look at monero because monero has been acting better than most and perhaps is worth paying attention to um and I, I would I would say still yes actually if Monero closes if Monero closes this weekly anywhere basically above 115 where it's it's currently trading right now sorry let, let me actually zoom in on this region uh, what was this final closure right here yeah 115 anywhere above 115 which currently is trading 116 I'd be looking for this one to fully to to uh, to fully reverse on the macro uh, yes short term targets up to about 132 region but that's that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about over the long term over the next few months probably back up towards about 160 ish region which would be quite impressive um, as all major we would have to switch into a bullish posture right here 
Short term, though, probably does play a little bit of a pullback if I had to reference the daily once again. Uh, wouldn't mind if it came back down to like 110 or even if it came back down to like 100 even. But uh, but again, big focus on the weekly closure today. That's the one that's really going to take over. So with that in mind, back to Bitcoin over here. And um, wrapping up these thoughts, probably does retest this liquid zone on the short term to the upside once again. But I do believe that uh, likely does sometime around, you know, CME open or, 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 you know, or around daily weekly closure, come back down and test somewhere around like 11.1 or 11,000 even. If not, sometime this week, I would be looking for a test down there. That's the area that I'm looking for. Uh, if I'm just speaking offhand right now, of course not financial advice. And because we are on the TN session, I feel like I can be a little bit more, um, I can, I don't have to be as nuanced, but yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this area for a long-term trade, not because it's guaranteed to work out, but because it does have a nice natural pivot point and below the bias just does change once again and potential for an actual long-term trade, which is well rather exciting, I guess. So with that in mind, um, I think I'll leave you off there. I'd like to wish you the best, the best, the haps, the happiest. By the way, IBLB, accept my fucking request on on uh, on Discord because I want to talk to you, man. I want to give you some free stuff. <laughs> I really, 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 really appreciate you going out of your way to um to to make the uh, the what's it called the the timestamps. Yeah, the timestamps on uh, on on YouTube. So I, I it would be really important for me to give back to you, man. Uh, so please, please allow me to do that. You fuck. Anyways, uh, wishing you well, man. Uh, take care, and until next time.